move this over to any number of chargers. And the reason I can do that is because it's utilizing the Qi standard. About two years ago, we started the Wireless Power Consortium. Uh, there are now nearly 80 members. Some of the companies, notably Nokia, HTC, LG, Samsung, Texas Instruments, Energizer, the list goes on. We recognized that in order to get wireless power to become part of everyday use, we need to have a standard, much like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, which is exactly what we've done. So while these pads are, are nice implementations, there's still something you have to physically buy and put on your desk. We're working uh, with manufacturers of office furniture. We're in Michigan, so we're working with many of the major automotive OEMs. So imagine you're, you're driving down the road and your earpiece starts chirping at you because it's almost out of a charge. You simply drop it down to your console in your vehicle and it starts charging without having to reach and fumble for your USB board. Some other things we're doing, uh, more future looks, we can actually power packaging. Um, this happens to be a box for a mobile phone. By using conductive inks, we can actually uh, charge the ink that's uh, on this box. And you'll notice that it's actually lighting up. It's simply embedded in the ink. <laughs> so for pennies on the pound, uh, imagine that's a cereal box or, or any type of box you would see in the grocery store that's actually powering. What's the benefit of that other than you know making kids point at it and say they want it? The huge benefit is from an inventory perspective. Once that device is removed, it can communicate to the store's inventory system. You know, it, it turns RFID on its ear. It can go far beyond the limitations of RFID. That package has a phone inside it that's also powering. So right now, when you take many items that are on display at a store home, first thing you have to do is charge it up. Uh, a children's toy that has a try me button on it. Well, now that's going to continuously draw the appropriate amount of power as opposed to getting it home and having the ultimate disappointment of it not working. Um, we're working with uh, one of the world's largest shelving manufacturers that has, uh, that, I'm sorry, places the shelves into stores. Um, now imagine you take that home and in your pantry or your cupboard, uh, you also have the technology built in. It's going to tell you what you have on hand for your own personal inventory. Uh, it can also communicate to your smartphone to tell you, you know, while you're on your way home from work, what am I going to make for dinner? Based upon your inventory in your refrigerator and your pantry, you can simply, you know, uh, pull up an app and it'll tell you what you're able to make or what you may need to stop and purchase. Uh, lastly, I want to talk a little bit about, again, a couple of the items that are in our booth over in the Future Zone uh, at FT7. Uh, we can do kitchen appliances. Uh, in kitchens where uh, you know, space is of a premium, we have it embedded in a normal countertop, and we can simply put the blender, or in this case, we have a smart pan over there, using inductive coupling, start heating the pan, boiling the water in less than a minute. It's got an insulator on the bottom, so I can pick that pan up while it's still boiling and not scream because it doesn't hurt. But more importantly, the countertop is cool to the touch. So that becomes truly a multi-function countertop. I can cook on it, remove my pan, do my kitchen prep, chop vegetables, whatever needs to be done, all on that countertop. But the beautiful thing of this is, again, we're not just producing things like this, we're working with industry leaders to embed it into everyday devices you use. So you'll start to see more products roll out this year. Uh, HTC, LG have announced cell phones coming out in which it's embedded. Uh, there are currently sleeve products like this that allow you to take a current phone and uh, take a more adaptive solution. But again, when it's built in, there's no uh, form factor effect to the device itself. Uh, we've also we've powered some cars. We had a, a, B, a Tesla Roadster <coughs> in our booth at the Consumer Electronics Show. So we can go from milliwatts to kilowatts, but more importantly, cutting out that cord that is such a limiting factor in so many of the things we do. So please, if you have a chance, get over to the Future Zone and see the blender and pan and some other smart packaging. Thank you.